wonderful section of scriptures in Jeremiah, especially then for this Feast of Tabernacles uh, 2019, especially appropriate for us to look at these verses, be inspired, and know indeed that they are and will come to pass. So Jeremiah chapter 30. And the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah from the Lord, saying, Thus speaks the Lord God of Israel, saying, Write you all these words that I have given to you in a book. For lo, the days come, says the Lord, that I will bring again the captivity of my people Israel and Judah. Notice in the prophetic books, they are Israel and Judah because they have never yet become one nation. They will do, according to the prophecy in Ezekiel 37, but not until Jesus returns. And so Israel and Judah are, at the moment, two separate peoples. Judah are the Jews, which comprise also the people of Benjamin and Levi, and the people of Israel, the house of Israel, the other ten tribes, which are indeed northwestern Europe, British Commonwealth, and United States of America. So the Lord says to them that he is going indeed to bring again, bring them out of captivity, and I will cause them to return to the land that I gave to their fathers, and they shall possess it. And these are the words that the Lord spoke concerning Israel and concerning Judah. For thus says the Lord, we have heard a voice of trembling, of fear, and not of peace. Ask you now, and see whether a man does travail with child. Wherefore do I see every man with his hands on his loins as a woman in travail, and all faces are turned into paleness? Alas, for that day is great, so that none is like it. It's the same time that Jesus spoke about in Matthew 24. It is a day that is so great there has been none like it in the past, and there will be none like it in the future. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble, Israel's trouble. Jacob had his name changed to Israel. It's the time of Israel's trouble, all 12 tribes of Israel. But he shall be saved out of it. Yes, Jesus will return, and the people of Israel, all 12 tribes that have been taken into captivity and scattered, will be saved out of it and brought back like a huge, tremendous exodus, and brought back to the Holy Land. Verse 8, For it shall come to pass in that day, says the Lord of hosts, that I will break his yoke from off your neck, and I will burst your bands, and strangers shall no more serve themselves on you. But they shall serve the people of Israel and Judah, but they shall serve the Lord their God, and David their king, whom I will raise up unto them. The resurrection, friends, David, King David, will be resurrected. And as we've seen in the last video, he will be over Israel. And the 12 apostles will be ruling each one of them a tribe of Israel, as Jesus promised them in the Gospels. Verse 10, Therefore fear you not, O my servant Jacob says the Lord, neither be dismayed, O Israel, for lo, I will save you from afar, and your seed from the land of their captivity, and Jacob shall return, and shall be in rest, and be quiet, and none shall make him afraid. Yes, it's the time when God is going to be with them in the form of Jesus Christ, and none are going to make the twelve tribes of Israel ever afraid again. Down to verse 18. Thus says the Lord, Behold, I will bring again the captivity of Jacob's tents, and have mercy on his dwelling places, and the city shall be built upon her own heap, and the palace shall remain after the manner thereof, and out of them shall proceed thanksgiving, and the voice of them that make merry, and I will multiply them, and they shall not be few, and I will also glorify them, and they shall not be small. Their children 
shall also be as aforetime, and their congregation shall be established before me, and I will punish all that oppress them. I've, I've showed you that in other videos, that certain nations are going to be punished when Jesus returns, for indeed what they did to the people of Israel and Judah when they fell, and how they gloated over their fall, and they were happy for their fall. And so some nations are going to have to be punished because of that attitude. Verse 21, And their nobles shall be of themselves, and their governor shall proceed from the midst of them, and I will cause him to draw near, and he shall approach unto me. For who is this that engaged his heart to approach unto me, says the Lord? Yes, the Lord will indeed be approachable at that time, very much so, because he will be back dwelling amongst the people of Israel and Judah. Verse 22, And you shall be my people, and I will be your God. Behold, the whirlwind of the Lord goes forth with fury, and continuing whirlwind, it shall fall with uh, pain upon the head of the wicked. The fierce anger of the Lord shall not return until he has done it, and until he has performed the intents of his heart. In the latter days you shall consider it. When these things come to pass, and they will come to pass, believe it or not, what I am telling you is going to take place. We don't know when. We don't know it's 5, 10, 15, 20, 30 years from now, but it is going to take place. And when it does, you will know that you were told. And indeed, in those latter days, people who have heard this message will know that they were told that it was coming. Chapter 31. At the same time, says the Lord, will I be the God of all the families of Israel, and they shall be my people. Thus says the Lord, the people which were left of the sword found grace in the wilderness. Some will, of course, not die. Other prophecies in the Old Testament say about one-tenth of the people of Israel and Judah will be left alive at the coming of Christ, and they're going to find grace. They're going to find some relief in the wilderness. When I went to cause him to rest. Yes, there's going to come a time, yes, of punishment for the people of Israel and Judah. But they will, those that live, will find some rest in the wilderness. Verse 3. The Lord has appeared old unto me, saying, Yea, I have loved you with an everlasting love. Therefore, with loving kindness will I draw you. Again, I will build you. And you shall be built, O virgin of Israel. You shall again be adorned with tablets, tablets, and shall go forth in the dances of them that make merry. You shall yet plant vines upon the mountains of Samaria, and planters shall plant, and shall eat them as common thing. For there shall be a day that the watchman upon the mount of Ephraim shall cry, Arise you! And let us go up to Zion, unto the Lord of hosts. For thus says the Lord, Sing with gladness for Jacob, and shout among the chief of the nations. Publish you, praise you, and say, O Lord, save your people, the remnant of Israel. Yes, there will come a day when the people of Israel in their captivity will cry out to their Lord. They will fall on their knees. They will repent. They will cry out to their eternal God, and they will realize what they have done, and they will be willing to repent and to change and to seek their God. Verse 8, Behold, I will bring them from the north country and gather them from the coasts of the earth, and with them the blind and the lame and the women with child and her that travails with child together. A great company shall return hither. It is yet to happen, my friends. And what a glorious, glorious time and day that will be at the beginning of the literal reality of the Feast of Tabernacles, the age that is yet to come. They shall come with weeping and with supplication will I lead them. And will cause them to walk by the rivers of water in a straight way. 
wherein they shall not stumble. For I am a father to Israel, and Ephraim is my firstborn. Hear the word of the Lord, O you nations, and declare it in the isles afar off, and say, He that scattered Israel will gather him and keep him as a shepherd does her flock. For the Lord has redeemed Jacob and ransomed him from the hand of him that, that was stronger than he. Therefore they shall come and sing in the height of Zion. They shall flow together to the goodness of the Lord. For wheat and for wine and for oil and for all the young of the flock and of the herd. And their lives, their souls shall be as a watered garden. And they shall not sorrow any more at all. And then shall the virgin rejoice in the dance, both young men and old together. For lo, I will turn their mourning into joy and will comfort them and make them rejoice from their sorrow. And I will satiate the soul of the priest with fatness and my people shall be satisfied with my goodness, says the Lord. This should make tears come to your eyes, my friends, when you realize what is yet to happen on this earth and how God then will bring his people, Israel and Judah, how he will save them and deliver them from their captivity and bring them back to the Holy Land. Verse 14, thus said the Lord, a voice was heard in Ramah, lamentation and bitter weeping, Rael weeping for her children, refused to be comforted for her children because they were not. Thus says the Lord, Refrain your voice from weeping and your eyes from tears, for the work shall be rewarded, says the Lord, and they shall come again from the land of their enemies. Verse 27. Behold, the days come, says the Lord, I will sow the house of Israel and the house of Judah with the seed of men and with the seed of beasts. And it shall come to pass that like as I have watched over them to pluck them up and to break them and to throw them down and to destroy and to afflict, so I will watch over them to build and to plant, says the Lord. In those days they shall say, No more the fathers have eaten sour grapes and the children's teeth are set on edge, but every one shall die for his own iniquity. Every man that eats sour grapes, his teeth shall be set on edge. Behold, the days come, says the Lord that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them and brought them forth out of the land of Egypt, which my covenant they break. But I was a husband unto them, says the Lord. But this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law in their inward parts and write it in their hearts, and be their God, and they shall be my people, and they shall not teach any more a man and his neighbor, saying, Know the Lord, or do you know the Lord, brother? They shall all know me, from the least of them unto the greatest of them, says the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity, and I will remember their sins no more. It's a wonderful, wonderful time that's coming. For the people of Israel and Judah. They're going to have to learn some big lessons first. They're going to have to be brought to humility and brought down on their knees to come to come back to their God, but they will. And God will restore them and He will bless them in the kingdom of God during the thousand year age to come. <laughs>